I saw this video a while ago and what's strange about it is that each one of those balls is moving along a straight path. But I don't really believe it until I focus on them one by one. So weird. I'm going to show you how to create this optical illusion using JavaScript and HTML canvas. Now let's add another circle to our list. Get it? Because I have a bunch of videos about circles and no, 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 wait, wait, really, stop, 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 stop. Phew. Okay. Because I wanted to give James a shout out for taking the impossible triangle a step further. He added colors, animations, and a couple different settings. Do check it out. Link in the description. Now, where were we? Oh yeah, circles. There, no, 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 no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. I'm programming using Visual Studio Code. And let's begin by creating a new file, index.html, and start writing basic HTML. First the doc type, and then the HTML opening and closing tags. And let's add the head section, and in it, the title. Let's call it straight circle, if that makes any sense. And in the body, we just add the canvas element. It's going to be a canvas app. Now, if you save and open this file in a browser, I'm using Google Chrome. The only thing you really see here is the title appearing here. But the canvas is also there if you open the developer tools and if you check the elements section here. It's just transparent. So we can make it visible by adding it a style, maybe a border of one pixel. And if we save and refresh, we see it here, but I want it bigger. And for that, let me first align this a little bit. And I'm gonna put here a width of 1,620 and a height of 1,004. And you can use any values you want here, really. I just like them because they cover the full screen in my case. You can also change these values in JavaScript to fit the screen size perfectly, but I won't bother for this demo app. Speaking about JavaScript, let's add here an ID for the canvas. And then I'm gonna type the JavaScript code here inside of the script section. And now we can reference the canvas by its ID. So to draw something on it, I'm going to get the reference to the context, like so. And now we can draw something on top of this, like maybe a circle. And uh, of course, JavaScript code, best if it goes in its own file. But for this simple demo, I'm not going to bother with that either. Now I'm drawing the circle at 200x, 100y, and a radius of 50. And this just means that we want to draw a full circle. Like if I'm going to refresh now, you can see the circle appearing here. But if this would be just pi here, then this is half a circle because pi means 180 degrees in radians. This function works with radians here. So it starts at zero and goes all the way to two pi to be a full circle. And I already don't like this code very much because you can easily forget what these are and there's no reason this has to be the X, Y and radius. So I like to be clear and specify X, Y and radius. And maybe we can take these as parameters when creating a helper function to draw the circle like this. I'm going to set the default radius to 20 because all the circles in this animation have the same size. And now when we call this function like this, let's say 200, 200, the coordinates, then it draws a smaller circle at 200, 200. 
but the code is clear. You see draw a circle, two numbers there, that typically means coordinates. And then here you can see that, okay, default value for the radius, and this is how the arc method works. Now I'm gonna do something a little bit dramatic here. I'm going to change the coordinate system so that 0, 0 is not here anymore, but it becomes in the middle of the screen. And the reason for this is because if I look at that animation and focus on one circle there, I see that it's moving back and forth, but it's speeding up from the center screen towards the side, and then it slows down there and then speeds up more, slows down also. So speeds up, slows down, speeds up, slows down. And that reminds me of the sine function. And the sine function gives you values between minus one and one. So if I would use it here directly, it's gonna go off screen. And I think this change is going to help make the code nicer overall. So to do this, I'm going to go here and translate by half of the canvas width and half of the canvas height, like so. And now if we save and refresh, we see that this dot has moved here, but that's because this has changed. We didn't change the coordinates of the circle at all. Now, one thing, before we start animating this width and height of the canvas, I would like to keep them as global values here. So I'm going to take them out from the canvas object. And now these can be just written here like so, because we'll reuse these from time to time. And I don't want to type my canvas dot all the time. Let's start animating using the sign function. So I'm going to remove the call to draw circle and animate instead. This is going to be a function we have to implement right here. And the offset, I'm going to calculate it with respect to time. So I just get the time from there. This is going to be a value in milliseconds. And the X is going to be the sign of this time. And the sign gives us between minus one and one. So to really see anything, I'm going to multiply this by half the width. And this is going to move it from left to right and draw a circle at x and zero. So it's going to be in the center of the screen vertically. To loop, we use the request animation frame, and this is going to call animate again and again as fast as it can. Now, if we save and refresh, <laughs> we get this crazy stuff. Uh, the reason is we are not clearing the canvas before redrawing. So circles are being drawn on top of each other. We can do that by saying clear rect minus half the width minus half the height width and height. Now doing this is going to make the <laughs> circle move, but it's moving like crazy. That's because this time is moving too quickly and we can slow it down by dividing by 1000, for example. And now we get the circle moving similarly as in that animation. And I think it's time to have more of them. So let's define here at the top a parameter for how many circles we want to add. And I'm going to go here and loop for i from zero to n. And let's wrap everything here inside of this loop. And at the moment, if I would refresh, I still see the same, but all those 10 circles are being drawn on top of each other. I could spread them out a little bit by adding here to the offset a value depending on i. I divided by n is going to be between 0 and 1, and multiplying this by pi is going to give us an offset between 0 and pi, or half a circle. And what we get is they are kind of moving in a half circle pattern. Like, now they are flat like this, but try to imagine them 
like the plane is orienting a little bit like that and they actually form a circle in that plane if that makes any sense and they are always like half of that circle in in shape now we want them to appear vertically as well to move vertically as well and for that i'm going to use um a trick and rotate the whole canvas i'll show you before drawing the circle i'm going to write ctx rotate pi divided by n and this has a very similar effect as what we are doing here but uh, the rotate values are cumulative so the first time we draw this we rotate once by pi divided by n and then the second time in the loop it adds again and again and again so it's really the same formula as here but um, modified on each iteration and we don't want to preserve this rotation at the end so i'm going to save the context and restore it here now save and refresh and there it is it's going off screen a little bit so i'm going to go here and instead of using the width i'm going to switch to using the height and this is going to keep them on screen and uh, i just want to point out that this is a very good project for practicing with these uh, operations that you can do on the canvas like translate rotate here really if you don't understand why this is the same as that you could play around with this code like maybe save and restore like so and multiply here by i gives us the same thing so that's because we are now restoring after each drawing here the rotation starts at zero on each iteration and then it makes sense to use the same formula from there i get many questions like why does rotate work like that why does translate work like that and i really think that this simple project is really fun you can learn a lot of these things by playing with the values and you can learn a lot about math as well like if what we did here confuses you you could just remove this offset maybe temporarily here i'm just going to multiply this by zero because it removes this part entirely and if you refresh you're going to see only that rotation part of the code affecting here so there's no more that movement that we had in the beginning and you see how this has an effect you can also try crazy things like what if you multiply here well one would give us the same we had before the actual illusion but what about 0 0.5 and we get something really interesting isn't it and actually it still has the same property as before that everything is moving in a straight path but it looks entirely different than the circle that we had previously so the circle was with one let's just give a brief check yeah but then how about positive values okay getting more crazy stuff happening let's increase the number of points maybe 20. okay How about three? I think if we have an even number, the loop should close. Yeah, so again, all of those circles are actually moving straight, but it creates a very different looking pattern this time. Really nice. And actually, you can even take this as um, variable so that it changes so i'm going to say here s is equal to again let's control it with sign similar as what we had before and if we replace s here like so we're gonna get this crazy thing so it changes from a circle 
to okay the reason why it's so crazy is that the values now are between uh if we look at s are between minus one and one so before we only tried positive values and now negative values flip the direction so maybe we don't want that i'm going to use positive values so now s is between zero and two and if we refresh we get this thing. It kind of looks alive, like slowing down and then speeding up. It's quite crazy. And play around with these. Like if you raise sine to the second power, it's not going to give you negative values anymore. And then this becomes between one and two. So it's going to change from a circle into this shape and back into a circle and back into this kind of like the lowercase e letter, uh, handwritten. <laughs> uh, yeah, cursive. So very interesting. And of course, you can try multiplying by two to get back into that loopy form we had previously. So now it goes from the circle back into this loop and back and back and back. And if you like the negative values, then just remove this part from here. And it's going to have a little bit smoother transition and do also a little bit. <laughs> crazy stuff as well. I wonder how this would look like with many, many points, like 200 points here. Oh, wow. Now we get this crazy line looking shape there. And again, really hard to imagine that all of those dots are moving in a straight line. I'm not even convinced anymore it's the case. Let's try to debug. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to change this into a stroke. So like this, but I'm only going to emphasize one of them. So after I do this, I'm going to fill only the center index, only the center circle. And now we can see it clearer. It goes up and down and up <laughs> and down. Yeah, crazy. And up and down. Let's try emphasizing the first circle. So it goes left and right and left and right but that different at a different pace than the other one i hope you got ideas how to practice with these operations that change the context and also different math elements it became quite complicated what is happening here but i think it's interesting to learn things in this way what do you think let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you guys.